some of the people that we interview on this fine pod um, uh, they, because they're promoting something. They're selling something. And there's no shame in that. I get interviewed when I'm promoting selling something. But then sometimes I'll speak to somebody just for the joy of speaking to them. And that's what we've got today. Because when we went after Catherine Parkinson, God knows she's got nothing to promote. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. The bubble has burst for Catherine. So she's here in a way hoping to get work. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Catherine Parkinson. Thank you so much. I listened to um, your Thompson and Greg interview and you were much nicer in the <laughs> intro. <laughs> what a pleasure to talk to one of the most revered... No, it is nice, though, when... <laughs> I've had it a few times now, when people aren't mm. promoting something mm. and then you just feel it's far more of just a general chat definitely i finished my job on saturday that i might have promoted so i'm definitely not promoting anything other than myself <laughs> this was at the national theater yes and i feel you know when you do a run of something like i've been hit by a truck tell people what what the play which play it was much to do about nothing and i played beatrice sang a little bit mm. i'm not a singer like you are I'm not. Stop it. But um, when you I say a singer like, like sing. I am, do you mean a singer who's touring Australia and New Zealand <laughs> with his eight-piece band in March of oh. 2023? Tickets at robbryden. Live. Do you mean that sort of a singer? <laughs> I see. I see. Um, wow, though, that sounds great. I'd like to see that eight-piece band. I don't expect you to come to Australia um, to see it. <laughs> well, well, I don't think I'll be going to do. I, I have just been in Australia filming what, something. What, what were you filming there? And um, we loved it there. I filmed a really rude show, which I, I'm I'm pleased you haven't seen because I think you'd be blushing looking at me across the microphone called Spreadsheet, which is um, well, Spreadsheet. It's rather unpleasant connotations with the word spread it's, if you say it's, it's rude. You, yeah. So it's just me having um, sex with lots of Australian people. Is that right? <laughs> Did you have an intimacy coordinator? Oh, my gosh. I've lived with the intimacy coordinator, yes. Tell the listener slash viewer what they do. I actually sort of think, God, how awful that we didn't have it before. It can be a slightly earnest process, which can clash if you're doing... I mean, obviously, the sex scenes I have done have been <laughs> with a comedic thrust. That's right, comedic. So that's different. But if it's uh, it if is. it's not comedic... Like normal people, which I'm sure... Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I watched that and was moved to tears by the sex scenes. They were so beautifully done. And I think for something like that, it's like absolutely integral. I also think with hindsight, things like, you know, you would sort of have awkward sort of romantic or whatever sex scenes with... Uh, actors and there were no rules. I remember sort of it being suggested I rehearse something with an actor on our own. <laughs> I mean, that. I think it's wonderful it's happened now. I think a lot of actresses of my generation feel slightly sad it didn't happen before because yeah. you suddenly see things in the context of the time and go, oh, God, I felt really vulnerable then and I was vulnerable. But for me now, as a, you know, knocking on a bit <laughs> actress doing. I'm not. Uh, but, you know, at 45, to have these... 45 is ludicrous, ludicrous. So this brilliant woman I had in Australia who who wasn't sort of... Uh, she had the good sense of humour and everything else, but we didn't even... We didn't manage to do the read-through before we did the scenes. And you stand opposite somebody and you go, hello, my name is Catherine. He says, hello, my name is Robin. And they say, is there anything you're uncomfortable with today? Any part of your body you don't want to be touched? And I sort of went, no. And then, I, of course, I felt like a slag. <laughs> No, I'm all good. Uh, <laughs> go, go ahead. So, uh, and so did, that... did, the, did the actor look at you and go, <laughs> steady on? I mean, they were often younger than me as well, so I felt like, you know, anyway. He said, no, I'm just happy to be no, here. No, I'm just happy to, I'm to be I'm in Australia. Involved. I'm working. And look at him. Go Four. for it, babe. Go for it. So, oh, that's, so then, that's he'd say, then they'd sort of go, um, hi, I'm Robin. I'm touching your shoulder, Catherine. And you have to keep eye contact. Oddly for me, it felt much more intimate, almost more personal than before, where you just kind of, you know, meet somebody. And I remember years ago playing a vicar with Alexander Armstrong. We barely even said hello. And just you just sort of... Oh, what did you have to do with Xander? Oh. That sounds horrific. 
no woman should it's, have to. It stayed with me. So now when you hear him on Classic <laughs> FM, mm. ushering in some Vivaldi, <laughs> does it bring it all back? It does. It does. PTSD. You know, we had dog collars on as well. You know, it's just, oh. it's not a nice, it'll flash before me on my deathbed, no doubt. And him, and for him, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a process that I think is so amazing Rob, for drama. So I'm I'm touching your shoulder. Yeah. And would it then be your turn? Well, <laughs> yes, and of course I made jokes. <laughs> of course I said, you know, don't worry, babe, I'm dead from the waist down. And then you could see them all going on like that. <laughs> but is it back and forth? It's back and I'm and Catherine forth. and I'm touching your elbow. Thank you. And I'm Catherine and I'm going to go... Burr. <laughs> But you're clothed during you're this. Clothed yes. During it. You're clothed during it. It's incredibly correctly earnest. Yeah. Um, and you choreograph a scene. The thing I'm about to do is supposed to be the least sexy in a way, sort of these two middle aged, lonely when you people. Say the thing I'm about to do. You don't mean here and now you in and me. this room. I'm gonna just launch myself at you. <laughs> the thing I'm about to do, Rob, may unnerve you, but stay with it. No, you have a new project coming up that again involves some tutti frutti. It does, but it's it's sort of realistic, authentic tutti frutti, oh. tutti frutti that middle aged, lonely people have. So it needs to not be uh, something you've typically seen. But of course, it's about keeping both people safe. I think it's better sometimes to be able to, like Emma Thompson did in Katie Brand's film. Yeah. Good luck to you, Leo Grande. They didn't have an intimacy. I think sometimes when you're actually embracing the gaucheness of a sex mm. scene, mm. perhaps if the actors are comfortable, they can make that decision. But how great that that is a conversation. I think a lot of it as well, in my limited experience, is how you get on with the other actor. Mm. How at ease are you mm. with the other person? Were you, you worked at the National Theatre before? Yes. I Well, Home I'm Darling went, was at the National. Yes, and then before that, I did uh, uh, Season's Greetings at the Littleton with Catherine Tate, oh. Mark Gatiss, Nicola oh. Walker, oh. Neil Stook, that's Mark Wooten. That's a cast, isn't it? David Troughton, Jenna Russell. Mm. Wow. I think Jenna Russell is um, my favourite. Did the Aikbourne come and visit? I think he did. I did another Aikbourne with Reese Shearsmith when I was pregnant with my first he came to that as as well i mean he's amazing isn't he you grew up in tolworth slash surbiton isn't that where the good life was set it's exactly where the good life was set but i was in yeah tolworth it's actually tolworth but i used to say surbiton i was a bit hyacinth bouquet <laughs> and then i went the other way <laughs> and then you went to oxford i went to oxford no, that's yeah a big, that's a big thing to do yeah. at what age did that start to become apparent or oh, Catherine's Catherine might be going to Oxford I don't think I was ever a shoe in I think I really wanted to go to Oxford because I wanted to be an actor it was like this sort of strange oh. I knew that unless I went there I don't think this is true now but unless I went there I would I'm from a very ordinary suburban background with no theatrical leanings or whatever and I think I saw that people that went to Oxbridge did it yeah. I, that was it's a, quite a superficial take what on What was it, the generation that you were looking at? Was it the Fry and Lorries and Emma Thompson? And, and oh, it, no, it was Rachel Weisz and Tandy Newton for me. It was oh, just the, be it was the beauties. You're, you're, that much, you're that much younger than me. <laughs> I remember meeting you when we were doing the 24-hour plays. Do you remember that? You were so funny when you went around the circle. I think you quoted a review or oh, something. Oh, I did. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> which so was, um, we all had to, we were all, the, the 24 hour plays thing at the Old Vic they used to do where you learned to be, wrote to play mm. and you learned that play mm. all within 24 hours. People stayed up. It was terrifying. Terrifying. And one year I hosted it and one year I, I acted in it and I quoted that A.A. A. Gill. Adrian Gill was a bit of a fan. He used to give me wonderful write-ups and he was, I was, it kind of wrong-footed me in a way because he was always so acerbic about so many people mm. but he seemed to really like me and whenever I'd run into him. But I played Kenneth Tynan. I remember. And and he said, and it was in the, the culture, he said, I do remember this, <laughs> he said, Rob Brydon can breathe a sigh of relief. He has now given the worst performance of his career. So I could relax now. That was done, right? That's not that bad, though. But That's the, in the context of liking well, you. The performance it? was no, not that bad. No, I didn't. I, didn't know. I mean, the review isn't oh, that man. bad. Heck. <laughs> well, I saw it, Rob. You weren't that bad. It was wonderful. I remember I, it. But the review is a kind of 
It's a, yeah, it's, it's I, a generous it was, criticism. It was quite nice. But yeah. then also somebody, another reviewer had said mesmerising. And I think I quoted, I can't remember anyway. Uh, that's, yes, we, we met doing that, didn't we? And that, that, was, that was terrifying. Yeah, it was terrifying. I really enjoyed it that year. And then I remember I did it another year and it was a case of hubris because I was like, I enjoyed it so much that year that they were offering free makeovers or, or you could run your lines and I went to see other actors and I was with lovely Mackenzie Crook and Sandy Busker and I was like, I'm just going to go and get a free makeover. I'm going to go and get one. And then... And I dried and I did, it's awful you discover things about yourself. I sort of tried to make it look like they tried. <laughs> Catherine. What kind of person am I? Catherine. Yeah. Hubris. That's fascinating. Mm. Two things. Mm. Larry Saunders. Yeah. Remember when um, Larry can't do the show, so Hank has to host it? And he's really, really nervous and he's terrified, but the audience find it endearing and they love him. Mm. And then he has to do it the next night. But now he's not nervous. Now he has this hubris yes. and he screws it up yeah. big time. Mm. And I hosted in America the LA BAFTA Awards one year. And I was, I was scared. And George Clooney was in the audience and Julia Roberts was in the audience. And I'm doing, and it went really well, oh, right? It went gosh. really well. And they asked me back the next year. Mm. And I went back, but I was, I was a little bit too, I, and it didn't go nearly mm. as well because I didn't have, you know, because out there they ain't got a clue who you are, you know. So you're, you're, I forgot that I still had to sort of win them over. Mm. And I was always reminded of that, of that Larry Sanders. Mm. And you had had a good year. Yeah, maybe so that's what it it's was. It's interesting, isn't mm. it? It's interesting. God, it's so kind of elusive, isn't it? Performance. Like, I mean, I think that's what I find frustrating about theatre is that I, I would have like three really good shows yeah. and then I'd have one bad show and I'd be in a bad mood of, for, about that but bad show. Bad, you know? bad by your barometer. And I sometimes feel that the, the actor's experience can be very different to that the audience is having. Because mm. you do a lot of the presenting stuff as well so brilliantly. I'm and I, I, I do. I, no, I, 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 I think I heard you saying with, I think on the Tams and Greg podcast, you know, that you want to have more autonomy and you yes. have that with that. Because I've always been really cautious about doing that. But then when the pandemic happened, I did Taskmaster and Travel yeah. Man and yeah. loved it. And I thought, what have I been so precious what about? What have I been missing? Yeah. yeah. And I suddenly thought, God, maybe trying to do a, be, be a theatre actress yeah. and trying to, you yeah. know, really, it, it is all a bit of, I'm being inauthentic and, 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 and a bit pretentious. But also what you're trying to do is find your niche and what, what your talent is going to serve. Mm. And I think in, in your case, it, it, it's quite rare, the ability that you have on, no, but on Would I Lie to You, the quickness is peculiar. <laughs> I mean, like it's not, it's rarer in a way perhaps than acting mm. talent. And I think that the more you act, the more kind of um, you can sort of, I think you get better. To, I think the reason I always wanted to do theatre was because I thought that I got better doing that but I've started to sort of think I always used to think oh the presenting thing you that's sort of straightforward why would you yeah. but I don't actually think it is because I don't think lot I think lots of people can't probably can't do that you have to be quick-witted and funny and all the rest of it uh, and uh, and that isn't as common as you think Catherine Parkinson <laughs> talking about Rob Brydon who died <laughs> earlier today well tributes have been swift Jenny Bond was at the Principality Stadium in Cardiff. Catherine, I feel that the old, our friend on the wall, or the wrist in this case, is, is, is against us. Um, it, it's been lovely to, to talk to you. You've rushed here after dropping your children off at school. Mm -hmm. As we speak, we are midway between the passing of the Queen and her funeral. Mm -hmm. A curious time, in an odd way, and there'll be dissenting voices, but in an odd way, it's a unifying thing because everybody is experiencing. We may have different reactions to it, mm. but we are all experiencing the same thing. Because you can't, you can't avoid it. No, you can't. And I'm mm. sensing that 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 there's something positive in that that everybody's looking at the same thing for once. Yeah, I think whatever your view uh, on the royal family and the queen, the sort of reminder of mortality is quite sort of um potent isn't it and i'm sort of feeling 
the, that a lot at the moment. <laughs> with that. Catherine Parkinson <laughs> speaking earlier today <laughs> in London. Well, reaction has been swift. Jenny Bond is at Oxford <laughs> University where Catherine studied and uh, fresh with the news that the statue that was recently erected to Catherine is to be taken down. Yeah, and also IT support is to be renamed technical support so as not to hint towards the IT crowd in which Catherine gave such a wonderful performance. Catherine Parkinson, who died earlier today. Can you see that? I think we just did. Oh, God. I'm moved. I don't think they'll take the statue down. No, <laughs> thank you. I think they'll keep I've it up. I've actually imagined a statue. Yeah, I could see your eyes light up mm. when I said that. You thought, it's why gold. is there not one? It's gold. What a golden yeah, statue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, all yeah. right, all right yeah. I hear you. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, join me. Stand. <laughs> Stand and salute Miss Parkinson.